Welcome back, everyone. We have had roughly three and a half hours of insane Heroes of the Storm action, but we're not done just yet. We got probably another half an hour coming at you. We are going to game number seven in our Celebrity Clash little show match right now. My name is Bahamut, one of the casters, and I'm joined by McIntyre. Are you ready for a game seven? I am. I am. I, I, I was truly planning on making these players play without mounts. I think... <laughs> In a perfect world, they would. But in the world we live in, and with the quality of heroes that we just had these past few games, I just don't think I can take that away from these players, from us, from the viewers, to not watch a, a, a serious, for all the marbles, game number seven. So there's going to be no rules. We're going to Volskaya. On that note, we can get on into Volskaya Foundry. The other thing that I, I, I often do see is, and we were talking about this, I think we talked about this Monday. Um, typically, you know, Control Point C is oftentimes the trigger up protector phase that does end the game. But mm -hmm. we actually got Caster Cursed on uh, on Monday and it literally was Control Point B ending. Man, it was a very quick Volskaya game, but I don't think we're going to be getting into that here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of banking a little bit on going into a potential fourth Trigla Protector, cycling back into eight. Yeah. I think these teams are really going to be, I think this is going to be probably the sweatiest game out of all of the games we have. I agree. And in, I think those, those, those fourth tree claws are like some of the most fun because the map is usually pretty broken up at that point too, right? Like you have some Kata splitting or maybe someone, you know, there's a strategy even to like play globals, like have that Samuro, have that Murky pushing in that lane, you know, while the objective's up, you know, if the other team doesn't respect it, now their core's under pressure and maybe that the Zerator Samuro is now split back and, and the other team has to deal with it. So there's a lot of macro simultaneously. There's a lot of micro because you do have to fight over the objective and you have to get the other team off of the objective. I think that 99 mechanic on this map and you know being able to kind of flatline it out and if you're there, they can't win it uh, is, is one of the most fun and exciting parts of Bubble Sky. Oh, I agree. Like, I, I think the way that you can b brawl over these points and you can have extended fights and that, that, that contested timer at 99%, as you were saying, really changes things out. But a Garrosh coming out immediately from Turkish Delight, a Joan on the left-hand side is a snap pickup. Um, I'm really surprised. I'll be honest. Maybe they just don't have an Ana player, but, like, I'm surprised. We haven't we've seen had it. We've had zero Ana ban or pickup in all of our games this evening, which is a little... I mean, granted, yeah. We did adjust some of the drafts and how the games would be played, mm -hmm. but I still I'm still surprised that we've we've had zero on a play whatsoever. But we're gonna be seeing a Leork on the right hand side and uh, something else to round out that draft. Maybe they go for like um like a ranged assassin here or something, something like a Hansa. Wanted to grab that. Or maybe, maybe picking a mockery character, Sylvanas. Oh, Sylvanas is um, really right. Hanzo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be that. Ma that makes sense because Savannah's Savannah's would have been a heads up ban. I don't think they're gonna try and ban out Kai Berries when it comes to healers, and I don't think they're gonna try and ban out Trixley either. So uh, yeah, I think Mockery would have been targeted there as a ranged assassin player. Probably some. want to try to ban something that would protect the Garage, um, and maybe even in this case, I would go for the Alexstrasza. Um, Kai maybe has played I a really good game on it already, and I think I think Anduin. I, I'm, I'm, hey, you're right on the Alex Straza, but like Anduin, I it was really strong in the last game. Also, Anonymous Tira, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Now, and now it comes down to, yeah. So, oh, okay, they're, they're going to ban it up. I was going to say, I, I think like as a garage comp, you, you, you want to kind of ban out the escape cards for the enemy, and Anduin's one of them. I mean, it's possible. Not with a Lucy. I was going to say, you know, we could see a Medivh here. We saw a game one out of Moon. Um, the Lucio pick kind of makes me feel like they want to shift as a team. Maybe start taking heavy CDs off of Heroics and Thrall kind of fits exactly into that, right? We're going to be able to Earthquake and at 20, we're going to be able to have Earth Shield. Um, just kind of a, a clumpy kind of all in together and all out together. So if Garrosh does throw somebody, then everyone's going to commit to the fight. And we'll probably see on the last pick, if this isn't a Thrall offlane, which it might be, I actually think the Thrall matchup into Lulorg is, is really strong. Um, we'll see, maybe, maybe we see Moon on the the, the Gray Man or something. Um, but Malfurion and Junk taken 
they're at the they're at the end uh i mean junkrat's so good on this map right displacement uh, poke uh steel trap zone control up. right the traps yeah and he could go trap the even okay ming so pretty pretty good actually i mean the poke on ming on this map is really good and i wouldn't mind seeing something like you know orbit four with even if you're feeling confident enough orbit seven malfurion's not very good at sustaining poke trades right because he has to moon fire in order to get those heals so it'll be interesting to see i, th I think a lot of looking at both teams comps a lot of this game is going to be one on the ranged assassins um allura and moon are going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to damage and poke um and and it's going to be up to junk and sylvanas to use those windows when they choose to poke to try to either pick out the front line or um kind of kind of hit big 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 heroics a big silence would be massive for their team so Neo, thank you for the 1,000 bits as we get into our final game of the evening. Game number seven for all the marbles, as we said beforehand. Smiler's on the left-hand side, Alora on the Lunara, Vesper on the Thrall. We've got Moon on the Lee Ming. Big Scoop will be on that Joanna and rotating from the Hollow Storm on the UC. And looking at Turkish Delight, we have Kai Berries on the Malfurion. is going to be playing Junkrat, Turk on the York, Mockery on the Sylvanas, and Leon Black on the ever-lovely... Volskaya Garage. <laughs> Warbreaker for Garrett. Oh, Rolling Thunder for Brawl. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, so he's seen here in the, yeah. He's doing this. This is the Lior counter build. Um, so it's just all about dueling the Lior. We'll see, we'll see how his other, it, it's even possible for him to take Maelstrom weapon at seven or follow through, um, mm -hmm. depending on how he's feeling. But looks like just a little wave clear happening in the middle. Yeah, just a little poke back and forth. We do also have Unfurling Shadows for Sylvanas. We'll keep you up to date on those stacks as they're already at six and two stacks on the Warbreaker from beyond on that uh, on that Groundbreaker, the Warbreaker from level one. They need 15 of those total, but they do get a uh, cooldown, excuse me, they get a damage over time at five stacks and they get a cooldown reduction. So it is something to know. But typically on a map like this, we do get a standard rotation between top to mid from the core forward, looking to get as much experience, pushing themselves into four talent tier before the project, excuse me, seven talent tier. Because actually we typically see about seven, level seven or just shy of level seven before control point A, which gets announced at two minutes and 30 seconds and is up and available at three minutes into the game. But the big thing immediately at one minute mark is grabbing these fortification camps. Mm -hmm. You want to grab those so quickly so that way it can respawn during the objective phase. Oftentimes there's a bit of a lull when the team's kind of, you just have well or they have to back off. And that's when you often do see them cycle back, grab another fortification camp. If they haven't used it, they get two. If not, then they just have one extra for the next team. Really, really good camp timings coming out from both teams. I think I'd like to see, I'd like to see teams and players manipulate waves a little bit better. Like Trick had a wave push in on his side of the map, their top, and he just grenaded it down. When they went to the bottom to do the turret there, I think he could have gotten an experience lead for his team if he had kept that wave to the right side here um, rather than pushing it in. I think that's a mechanic that you don't see as much, but it can be utilized, especially now that the XP globes have been introduced to the game um, to really get your team a lead. But Turk's actually looking to duel here, Vesper team. He hasn't taken his level four yet. He does end up going mana tied up for, mm -hmm. for the CDR here. A nice duel. Again, at level seven, we'll probably see him take one of the two auto attack talents typically unless he's feeling super unsafe and which case he'll go uh, i'm gonna call it blood for blood but um i believe i believe that's what it is actually is it actually called that i, I thought it was blood for blood i know it's a little blood droplet is the icon i call yeah I, well i call it blood for blood because it used to be a 16 talent and then they uh, gave thrall it was a 16 that looked like a little dagger with some blood on it and mm -hmm. it used to be like Tyrael had it kerrigan had it illidan had it Back when, then, back when we had like gen, like like uh, yes, like you had uh, battle venom. momentum. Battle momentum was a thing yeah, for a lot. That, of that's why I always call things battle momentum, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I mean, do you remember when scouting drone was a thing on Malfurion? Oh, Hello, yes. I love, God, love best that. Best Brock right there isn't able to do so, and first blood going over the side of Turkish delight as control point A is up and available. And as we said, seven talents here, kind of close, about six and a half on both sides. 
They're going to be cycling back into top lane to push back this wave. They don't have their own siege camp grabbed inside of Smiler, so they could look to clear that out. That top lane, rotate back, grab their camp, and then look to cycle onto this point with potentially seven talent here. But Leork still so uh, soaking in bottom lane, making sure they're, look they're going to be able to grab that seven talent here as the enemy team does match that exp I think Smilers might look to do heal camp. They, they probably should here. I mean, you're not going to contest the mid objective. You can push the wave out, but sometimes you see people will start up the, the heal camp here, right? To kind of force the other team off of that objective to contest. Because if they show up with the heal camp up, they can use that as an advantage. Um, a great knock up here from Leon Black. Hits his unstoppable has us covered with ancestral wrath that's what okay. it was not blood yeah, for blood but yeah no i thought like i saw the little blood the little blood mark and i was like yeah it's, it's blood for blood that makes sense but that's uh, moonfares is not able to get out of there no. they're gonna get picked up on that Li Ming, the turk is gonna be getting the wraith walk back overtime is here and available for the members of turkish delight it seems like that's first trickle up protector for them we have to admire there to the game sense and synergy that turkish delight is showing off there you know the grosh connecting the leaming onto the trap Mm -hmm. And actually, a solo kill comes out from the Thrall. He he did opt in to go to the Inceptral Wrath, and he was able to solo kill the Turk. It seems like Leork, while he's very good at dueling, he's not as good as Thrall in the early game without that 13 and 16, right? Um, so the, we'll look to see if those power spikes help him in that 1v1. But the robot here taking down some walls, doing what it usually does, trying to get a little bit of that experience lead. The big thing control, light. Yeah, Con control point eight trigger protectors. You often want to get the mid lane front gate, maybe the towers off of that. Rotate to top lane as quickly as possible. Open up that front gate and take out well. Yep. Getting rid of that lane sustain in top lane is a big factor for control point B. You might actually see them cycle back and try and force that up in some of their rotations. But right now, Vesper is going to be just pushing out bottom lane. They're going to catch Turk in the rotation. Nice Even though it's one step. to two in kills, it is still really close in experience. Yeah. Turk could go down here, depending on how aggressive they play. Unfortunately, I don't have a minion wave. Lake is down here, though. Uh, the Turk realizes that they're not going to play into that. And we are coming up onto level 10 here. Both teams' turrets are up. The, help, the, the heal camp is still up. So they're just doing, doing a little tango, a little trade. Um, probably see a level 10 fight. We might even... If they both clash at the heal camp, I think I want to hear some comms from Turkish yeah. Delight. Um, we'll That's see. We'll see if it pans out here, but it looks like all players are moving up. So let's let's jump into some Turkish yeah. Delight comms. Yep. <clears throat> Liam could die here. He has no mana. Mana. Oh, you probably need a back here. I don't wanna bomb, but I will. But look at our low down. Down. Skin down. Fucking pissing me off. Can I get a heal? Bloom. Three. What's the cooldown? Three. Oh wait. Tanya. Cool, so bottom yeah. Turk. Yeah, I'm gonna get on our. Can I get Liam here? Anyone uh -oh. here? We're not with. We're not with. Yeah, it's far. I'm not killing this. I'm just leaving. Okay. I don't know how my eating. Moonfair it. just turreted me. He's gonna get a Leora kill out of this, sure. But he used the turret. Is it really worth it? No. Not. Amazing. Nice turret <laughs> in chat. <laughs> I mean, but here's the thing. Experience is experience and a kill is a kill, but I, it is still actually pushing out bottom lane a little bit. I mean, it's going to come down here and soak up the experience as Turk does respawn. I, I is it hate. even worth it? It's... <laughs> It seems like it right now is actually they got the well down and bottom lane on top of all of this too. We do have the bottom committer on the left hand they side. They get the yield. They get the yield came from that, right? So it's kind of a it's a trade, right? We're using the trade. Oh, Leon, you don't see that often out of him either. He he actually misplayed there and was unable to cast his E on to the Li Ming, even though she had already flashed. Uh, we also just really quickly. I'm I'm now being able to. I'm now skimming through more of the talents. We have March the Black King for Lior, which is not often a priority, but that's an earthquake from Thrall in our mid lane. Warlord challenge comes out. They do get the groundbreaker in time. Vesper still getting procs onto their Frostwolf Azalians, but that's going to be a sound barrier from Lucio to buy some extra time. Lior trying to wraith walk out of here doesn't look like they're going to be able to do do so as Moonfears is able to blink in. Uh, that is Lunara going down at the top of our screen. Rip tire from Junkrat doesn't find a kill. It's a one for one. 
in our mid lane engagement. Big Scoop gets thrown away, but they drop the buy to Committer. And I think they're going to be able to I get out. I think that, yeah, I think that's going to keep them alive. But, you know, th those are the type of movements where was it worth, right? Turk, Turk really asked a big question there. Like, is saving the Big Scoop but using the heal camp worth um now we're, we're going back to even items actually mm -hmm. not even mockery has been very disciplined with his turret and this is the turret that moon had used just earlier to gank so we now have a two turret lead or i guess a one turret lead right now um for this top objective and we have leoric already on it um getting percentages so Let's see how Smilers reacts here. I, I, I'm a little worried about Leon's positioning here. He does have a... M oh, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't be worried. Oh, mega throw. This is the taunt, him. but I think Mockery with that last auto from over the wall, that 13 talent that he had taken, actually is able to connect there. And he's throwing in the Turk on Lake Fu. She's trying to grind away there on the wall. She is able to as Lucio. Big scoop getting pressed here by Mockery. Don't think he's going to go down. Allure kind of stepping up here for some peel as well. Turk does land the drain. And yeah, that's it's just gonna be a one for zero on Moon there. Good toss from the Grosh. Sorry, I looked over at chat for one second. And I was just like, they, I just saw Lunara thirteen, and then I looked over at who posted. I was like, oh okay, yeah, that that'd be the person who, who absolutely brings <laughs> it up. But uh, welcome, Enigmatic. How are you doing, bud? They do get that kill. Or excuse me, they do force them back, and they're gonna be able to grab themselves a trigger up protector. Uh, no, actually, they're gonna try and invade. Do you want to try and jump into Smiler's chat really, really quickly? Let's hop over. Pressure the back line here. I'm going in. I'm going in. Mouth, mouth, mouth. Live mouth. I'm getting low. One mocker, mocker. Stop the point. Mocker, mocker. Oh, I didn't get my trade off. Dang. We gotta give this. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Well, I'm low. Nice. Oh, I'm really low though. It's really awkward. I think we have to get out. Yeah, fail for now. It's really yeah, low. I'm too, I'm too low. I can root this guy. That's all I have. Nice. Good job. Stay on the point. I'm out. I'm alive now. Good job. Oh no. All right. I really. I don't know. I thought we were gonna kill there. I'm like literally, I have nothing. So. I've got blessed shield for Makri like, when I get there. They just made a big mistake by not towering you. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Let's get out, let's go, let's go. Let's get out. Maybe if. Uh, I don't know, we have. Control, I, can I, think you, I think you stay, but just throw, throw heals off the creep wave and. Yep, yep, yep. Maybe, oh, we should say that glow for everybody. Uh... Back up, back up, back up. Yeah, I, I think you guys can kill Leoric. He's got nothing now. I'm looking at Junkrat. They have no healer. What, am I back lane? Yeah, yeah, Mockery, Mockery. Nice! <laughs> Just sniped one of the air. Right here. I would lost Lunara, for it, but we are at 99%. I'm coming in hot. I'm like, oh, I'm coming yes! in hot! <laughs> You're dead! Give me a oh, reset! Oh. I'm old. Oh my god, he's not gonna die. Nice. Yeah. Oh my god, so yeah. many nuts today! <laughs> oh, we need soak. Let's get mid soak. It's interesting to listen to their comms because it's very quiet at the start. Yeah. And then like as the fight progresses, they actually start to communicate more. Like at first mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, I got my own plan. I'm gonna do my own thing. Like Moon was literally silent the entire time. That entire reset. 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 Yeah, and then yeah. they fight and then when they finally died, the communication started, which is really weird, but hey, it worked out for them as they have 16 talents here and a trigger left protector control plane B moving on into bottom lane. Yeah, I was uh, I'm there with you on that. It was like Moon was in his own like Zen mode. Saying absolutely nothing. Did you see Alora get that? Like the oh the, the jump the Lucio all kill the, onto into the fray. Well, also, but literally killing mockery with with just like those last couple shots following mockery is, or maybe it was uh, Junkrat. Yeah. I can't, honestly yeah. can't remember. Yeah, but yeah, it was trick trick on Junkrat. Insane. That's when Lakefu was nuts. Yes, that yes. And then and then Alora to be able to get the leaping strike onto mockery. Yep. That was the one on the mockery. And then just getting the side damage as they get the banshees. Oh my god, just so well played from the Smilers right there. As they get themselves a bottom lane fort, looking for a mid lane. 
Yeah, that, I, I will say too, and, and they pointed it out as well, that Rip Tire really should have yeah. focused on the Thrall. Um, yep. Because that was, was an easy Especially with throw. the Mana Tide, he was able to sustain back up in the lane, and, and mm -hmm. he, he had some impact there, right? He was he was able to kind of force them off and, and give space for both Alora and Lake Fuda to, to, to shine. And, you know, Lucio is one of those characters where, like, even if he has them, man, he's still doing his passive thing, right? Still giving movement speed, still... You know, we'll, we'll call it healing. Um, but just being there, being able to wall ride, being able to use that new passive to slow or, um, in this case, I believe stun, right? Um, maybe, nope, didn't take the stun talent. But um, yeah, just just kind of being present, um, badgering. I, I think that was, just, yeah, a really good well-played fight. Moon coming up, cleaning up as Li Ming, as Li Ming does. Like, it, it just the resets like you could, you could even hear it in comms they were just like please i need one reset <laughs> yeah. that's all i need please yeah they, they, were, they, they were about to get in they, they managed to pop off there but either way second trigger left protector going over the side of the smiler so it's one for one on trigger left protectors to both teams control point c as we noted earlier often does end the game but mm -hmm. i mean it's 10 to 8 in kills like we've had some decent back and forth 20 talent here should be up for both sides as we get into that control point c if not very very close for turkish delight but I, as i said we still have like a solid two minutes before we're going to even have that being announced or up and available so rotation is coming out 20 talent here should be there and it's probably going to be safe pass to play up until that point unless they really try and make a bush party happen on the side of smilers I think this is actually a great time to look for picks. A lot of yeah. teams uh, tend to kind of lose focus because they're so excited about the level 20 talent mm -hmm. that they, you know, things like, oh, I mean, Allura is pretty dead there if Leon plays that correctly. Um, but they tend to kind of uh, start to get a little more loose um, because they're so close. They're like a wave away, right? But it's like the best time to strike. You can, you can get that pick uh, right before they hit 20 and then it just completely bricks that 20 advantage for the other team and gives the other team a, a chance back in the game. But yeah, you're going to see now, you know, they're going to do their best here on Turkish Delight to just avoid, but they do have a really, I, I, unless we lose a keep here, I think they have a really good chance to hold on a tree clove, but letting them free push like this, like mockery, they need to be here. Like that middle wave is, is as much as that soak is important. That needs to be done by Turk and we need the range damage dealers here. Moon actually looking for an insane outplay there with that level 20 repulsion down it. Mm -hmm. I, I look I like that they're stop pushing this bottom lane. They're not they're not trying to go for a keep whatsoever. They're literally just trying mm -hmm. to open up the gate because if they can get trigger up protector C and it's walk prep. through bottom lane, yep. they can go ahead and open that up. And, and you said it perfectly. It's it's prep. It's good lane prep. Also to note, side walls give vision. If you did not yep. know that, side they don't give experience, but they do give vision to the enemy team. So if you have opportunities like what you just saw, where they're just waiting for the objective, just sitting around, or they can just take that wall out, it's a very good advantage because you're just denying. Like, little bits of vision of that are massive, massive information gains for the enemy team. Just being heads up about it works out for them very well. But 20 talents here, not too far off on the side of Turkish Delight. You called it right though. Turkish Delight was looking for a fight pre-20 because they were they were just like, if we can find a fight, maybe get the experience back in our realm. But now, point C up and available. We're getting the 2020. Right. We're getting the yeah. 2020. It's uh, I I honestly I think that if Turkish Delight loses this objective, but they no one dies, they can defend it. Well, let's okay. actually jump into their comms because they are technically the defending team. Here. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's jump into their comms. Turkish Delight. <laughs> I'm gonna play around the trap. Yeah. Bat wailing. Drop your turret, Leon. Drop Ooh, your turret. I'm I'm huge. I'm huge. I'm huge. Lake food's kind of low. I'm on Lake food. Dead? Maybe. Lake food. Lake food. Lake food. Lake food. Lake food. Lake food. Finisher. Finisher. I'm stuck on the fucking oh god. Deck. Yeah, me too. I think I get her here. Oh my yeah, god. Her. Yeah, I get finished by Moon though. Resets are gonna kill us. Good dodge, Turk. Heck. Hmm. <coughs> what? Hmm. Wow. So yeah, like, so this... <laughs> yo, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just, I literally, conveyor belt. Control point C is the most difficult yeah, control point to fight so over, tough, and you could hear man. it in their comms, like, 
They were trying to kill Lake Fu, but they couldn't get to her because of the conveyor belts pulling them back and basically mitigating any sort of movement speed they have. And now Trigla protected through bottom lane, Mac. This is I I was only like I was before this happened, I was honestly suggesting they just give it. Like that was what I was out loud yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um It's just an it's just an icky objective, and we just saw that ickiness happen in real time. And losing the keep before uh, it just it opens up. You know, had the tree claw had to kill the keep, it would have been very possible that you know Turk could have gotten one, two, three drains, maybe even before that the tree claw even got to the core. Not saying that the the, the push would have happened, the defense would have happened, but that's gonna be it. We see a victory from the Smilers. They actually were able to take it out there in that, that last team fight of the game in the bottom objective on Tree Club. Well, shall we uh, join their voice, voice comms and congratulate them? Yeah, let's let's move on up. We got to actually play real comms. Right? Hello? Well, congratulations so on your victory. That's a four and three. Game number seven win. How are you all feeling after seven games of... I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. That's why I'm feeling hungry. I'm yes, sleepy. Yeah. You hungry for wins? Wieners! I already got my wins. I'm full up on hey. wins. Full on the fun. wins. You so, guys would have with a bounce back. I will say that Moon did say if you guys play normal games, you would win. Mm -hmm. Is there any coincidence to that? Do you, do you think that you just you 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 have you have no capability of playing things that aren't the real game and that you oh, know, it's not no cave okay, 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 okay wait a second we want haunted minds though it's some real garbage okay <laughs> I, just have no interest in I was gonna say i joined in and liam was like well then we have normal games um <laughs> yeah i mean you guys did win the, the haunted minds game was a bit of a bebega fest i mean that was a uh, we had pots and pans. I've never quick, seen that map, map before, so... <laughs> yeah, that was actually Alora's first time playing that map ever. Dear God. <laughs> Welcome to the best, best map, and here's the storm, obviously. Uh, no, overall, like, these, these games were so much fun to cast. Uh, did, did it literally feel like, you know, shenanigans aside, like, once you got to the point where you're playing regular games, did you feel like you are just more comfortable, or did the shenanigans just throw you off a little bit in the I have never played Rexar, so that was an experience. I'm asking for builds as we go through the game, so that was interesting. I was <laughs> who put, there. Who put her on Rexar? Hello? Uh, hmm? Listen, we didn't have the best <laughs> options. Do you? I actually don't think that her Rexar was the issue there, uh, because essentially Rexar, Rexar, Mirror, we, they just there's two bears beating at each other. Yeah. And the butcher. And the, the whole team. <laughs> The Butcher does get to eat Misha. Like, they actually just had a good team comp, honestly. Like, they had a bunch of stun locks to hold people in place for the Butcher. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think we played too bad. Okay, so now the, uh, I guess, a uh, final question for me. How do we have done no mounts? Would you guys have been excited or not? I thought that's what we were doing, honestly. But I, nah, I mean, here's a storm. Nah, it's a good nah, game. Nah, nah. Half of my play. heroes don't uh, use mounts anyway, so. It is a hard habit to break, but I think if everybody knows about it going into it and is ready to unbind and go for it and draft accordingly, it would be pretty awesome to see. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I, I can't really speak from experience because I've never played it. I would have just gone cool. to Hakka. It'd yeah. be cool on something like like um, Tomb of Spider Queen, like a small map where you. That's what I. That's what I would have yeah. hoped that the map yeah. would have been Tomb, and you guys would have. It would have. Oh, it it would have been tight. I mean. I wish we'd have done it earlier. Dude, question. You know the cool thing is there could be more show matches, but go ahead. Bob. Question: <laughs> Was it there? Was there ever a discussion of Chogall? Because I want it. Like there was yes. there was one draft where yes. I was just like, this could be a Chogall, but then you went Alex Strauss, and I got disappointed. We talked about Cho Gaul when you said no ranged assassins, but we kind of came to the conclusion that Gaul's a ranged assassin. Yeah. Yes. That I, is actually how that works. Yeah, if you click yeah. on it. Um, okay, yeah, sure, if that'd be allowed. 
Okay, so it was, it was it was for something else. But either way, no, these these were such fun games, and it was actually a blast to cast. Before we let you run out of here, are there any shouts that you'd like to give? We can just kind of go from top to bottom. We'll start with Alora. I'm going to give it to production this time. You guys, I cannot believe how much you guys have done. You're nuts. Just, you know, so you know that. I appreciate all the work that goes into this, so thank you. Yeah. Lakefoot? I... Oh wait, are we going in order? It doesn't have to. Just Matt, go. Moon, if you want to jump in, flow, go for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought uh, I wasn't sure how these were gonna work out, and they're kind of interesting. Although, uh, uh, still, when you feel competitive and you want to beat the other team's ass in the actual game, which we did, Turk. I think he's smoking out the front. He can't hear me anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, just, it was nice. I think like going back and forth, even like a normal game and then like a crazy game yeah. and normal game crazy would be uh, like yeah. the optimal way to do it. I'd agree with that. It was a bit exhausting, I think, uh, just going through the through the ringer. But I'm I'm glad that you guys endured it and then enjoyed it. Hopefully, um, yeah, I had fun. I yeah, think everyone so. had fun, except her. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> I could hear him shouting a lot. Like, whenever Liam's like, all right, I think I might get a kill here on Turk. Ah, fucking Liam, I don't want to fucking kill here. It's just muffled screaming from the basement, you know? And, he may or may not have been like, Liam is so weak, I just want to kill him right now. And <laughs> Leon was like, you need to back Turk. And he was like, but he's weak, I want to kill him. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you, can't, you can't put the reins on Turk. He just fights harder. All right, well... Yeah, I, I had a great time. Uh, obviously, we knew we were going to win. Uh, I just wanted to make it look close. I think we had a team agreement on that. Yeah, that was the, the whole point of losing those games. I guess, um, Baha, you got anything else? Uh, that's it for me. Thank you all so much for, for playing these games and, and going Wait, through. Wait, I have anyway. one thing to add. Yes, yes. yes. So sorry, but I have to interject. Yeah, you're Happy fine, birthday to my wife, Nicole. Happy it birthday. is now Happy three birthday. minutes past Happy midnight, so it's yeah. not it's not her birthday yeah. now, you, you. but it was yesterday as of three minutes ago. Happy oh, birthday, yeah. Nicole. And Tim fought valiantly for her to claim this victory. Oh, yes. that's so true. That's and where it is. games, GG's to the other team. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Well, thank you all so much for the games. We really appreciate the feedback and uh, glad you all had fun. And congratulations on your Game 7 victory and to take the, the, the first show match that we put together here. You all have a great night. And once again, congratulations. Take care. And honestly, it was f***ing easy. <laughs> <laughs> he hit us with the coffee, oh, dude. He hit us with oh, the coffee. I wasn't going to hit us with the... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. That is that honestly though that those, these games were so much fun and this was an absolute blast and just shout out to everyone in chat who's been hanging out for supporting and donating towards the prize but we actually raised a significant amount of bits for these for these players um so at some point I think someone else donated 50 bucks as well um oh, wow. I might have missed it during the game but either way thank you all for supporting so much and uh maybe we'll we'll put something like this together in the future once again you should probably follow the uh Heroes Hearth Twitter to find out more information or you can follow this channel you can sub to this channel Sick we do, emotes we well. do have um every monday actually and it will be in me and bahamut uh where our casting in-house games with a lot of competitive heroes players so if, if you guys are interested in watching really good competitive heroes that is happening every monday and obviously season two of ccl is coming right around the corner um so following the heroes hearth ccl twitter is, is, is your place to be when it comes to yep. all that as far as ccl Twitch content. We're incredibly active. Uh, I would know because I'm trying to work on it myself of making our YouTube channel generate as much content for heroes as possible. So if you guys haven't checked it out in a while, I, I would really um, appreciate it if you did. As I think there's a ton of content. People like Kyle Ferguson coming out with bangers every week. Of, you ever listen to this show called Into the Nexus? Because I, I do. And actually... Good. If, if you're in chat, you should too. <laughs> I may or may not be on Into the Nexus tomorrow. So, oh, look at that! It's yeah, a really good so. podcast. Check it out. I believe it starts at noon PDT, three o'clock EDT. Typically, is what they start. They might have a different tomorrow. Schedule. Yep, that yeah. is exactly um, when that will start. But also, really quickly, just want to shout out. There is um, someone in the background who does a lot of work that 
typically you don't mm. hear their voice. Jules runs everything. They keep they make our faces look pretty. They do all of the scene transition transitions. Like all we we just show up and cast the game. So just shout out talk. to Jules who's doing everything in the background. Literally like, hey, you should jump into team comms, like reminding us to do stuff. So <laughs> there's production in the background that does a lot of work and keeps us on point. So shout out to them. But um, that will be wrapping it up That's for it. us. Um, you can find me Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. Bahamut Gaming. Uh, I'll be back on my channel tomorrow night at around four o'clock PDT for some Here's the Storm action. Uh, as I noted on Monday, working towards that partners, if you want to come by and uh, lurk, and hang out and help us towards that, they'll be much appreciated. Uh, Mac, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on McIntyre on Twitch and McIntyre Hotch on Twitter. Um, again, or Heroes Hurt CCL. Mm -hmm. uh, any of that stuff, that's, that's, that's me, baby. But yeah, thanks, thanks for coming out tonight, Bahama. And again, Jules, shout out to you. Killing it. And Heroes... Heroes Hearth as well, uh, amazing. Has just always been there for the Heroes community, and I appreciate them uh, for having us. So, Until then, see you on the Nexus. Have a great night. See you on Monday.